Okay, so now we're going to have a chat about sensual sense. And I've, I've written there, young living, not just in the bedroom, because we're going to talk a little bit more than, uh, than just uh, young living in the bedroom. So we have a beautiful gift with us uh, with the essential oils that they have a wonderful opportunity to create space or to create an ambience. And so I know a lot of people will diffuse oils, particularly for that reason, in, a, in any room to help their kids concentrate with their homework, to um, get rid of odours. We're, we're constantly diffusing the oils in the office, in the bedroom, in the kids' bedrooms, uh, in the car for some people. Hands up if you, if you have a USB diffuser and you diffuse in the car. I know a lot of you do. Yeah. <laughs> exactly yeah um so it's a it's a, a gift for us and we can use that gift in all different kinds of environments and in today's topic we're going to talk about it in the context of love intimacy romance sensuality sexuality passion libido intensity, cuddling, snuggling, and pillow talk, and probably more as well. So, excuse me for a moment, I'll just get my place. So, as you are aware, we have uh, our central oils really work on the levels of um, body, mind, and spirit. And it's really nice to have something available that can work with this enhancing love and art, enhancing intimacy and romance and so on. So we've got, um, I mean, who, who wants more romance in their life or more intimacy in their life? It's, it's something that's a really important part of uh, not just relationships with our partner, but, you know, close connections with others as well. So we, we have, oils and we're going to mention a couple uh, many of them this evening that have and and the categories i suppose that are relevant to this topic fall under things like calming also uplifting so putting you into a more energized uplifted state then grounding making sure you're present and in your body and connected to yourself as well as to others and then there's confidence or sexual confidence or social confidence so that you can say what you need to say. Uh, and then we have also a category really of aphrodisiac. So we're going to cover some of those tonight. So what we are specifically going to cover is the top five oils that are uh, involved in, in this topic. We're going to set the mood. So for dinner time, for bath time and for bedroom time. We're going to talk about personal fragrancing and then we're going to talk about sensual touch as well. So I loved this quote. I thought it was really fantastic. Intimacy is not purely physical. It's the act of connecting with someone so deeply you feel like you can see into their soul. And that's what we crave. That's what we want more of. That's where we want to take to be able to take the barriers down, to feel safe, to feel in, in love with ourselves so we can be in love with others. So that can be a journey for a lot, of, a lot of us. That doesn't always come easily. So this quote I found as well, and I thought this was really relevant too. Sensuality takes planning and work. I know many of us really expect romance in a relationship, especially us women, uh, and sometimes it doesn't happen and we kind of think maybe we've got the wrong person. <laughs> no, I don't think that's the case. I think we've got to create it. We've got to, we've got to plan it and we've got to work it. And, and that's where the beauty of the oils come in because they can enhance and facilitate and improve many of those aspects of our lives. So, I'm gonna show you my top five oils in my, re my research and um, hopefully 
you can add a few extras yourself as well. So, excuse me while I put my glasses on. Now, the first one, of course, I'm going to get you to type in what it is. Of course, it's quite obvious, but tell me what it is. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I mean, it must be the premier premium most gorgeous divine oil uh it, and as it's as you as you know it's one of the most recognizable and culturally significant flowers in the world it's very aligned with love it has a rich intoxicating aroma that's just as beautiful as the bloom itself we just love it uh, it's distilled to gently release the delicate flowers oil through steam and every five mil bottle takes, and this is American quantities, 22 pounds of rose petals. I think that's probably around 10 kilos of rose petals. That's an enormous amount. And so that's what makes it a valuable oil. Thank you. Thank you for the <laughs> there, close to 10. So, you know, our, our um, rose oil being completely pure of course is is over three hundred dollars it's our most highly prized premium oil as i mentioned so it's um it's beautiful but rose oil its quality some of its qualities are that it actually elevates spiritual experiences so it's no accident that it's aligned with sensuality and intimacy and relationships and valentine's day and so on it also encourages self-reflection. And I think this is really an important aspect in intimacy because if we do find that we're not experiencing the sensuality or the intimacy or the connection that we really want, then in many cases, it's blocks within ourselves. It's maybe a fear or a, you know, protection or a... Um, a limiting belief of some kind and nothing fixes that nothing there's no pill for that so that's when we need to be quiet go internally and really identify some of the things that might might be blocking us or might be in the way for us experiencing the intimacy that we really want to experience because you know if we're fighting with our partner or arguing or expecting things from them or even if it's with your sister or your mother um, that you would like to have a more intimate relationship with in terms of connection and it's just not happening for you then there's work to be done and that really all unfolds inside of self-reflection self-awareness and that kind of thing it also creates a beautiful uplifted feeling so it's one of those spiritually uplifting oils and we have many of those but the queen of it is rose and it's also considered an aphrodisiac so it's it's got the whole kit really and i think in many cases in the blends and the recommendations around this topic rose is appropriate so maybe one day you can save up and get yourself a bottle of rose oil i know that um it's great in cooking as well. So our next oil is Ylang Ylang. And it, as you can see there, this is a, um, a graphic from the Young Living blog. And it says, did you know that Young Living, sorry, did you know that Ylang Ylang is pronounced Ylang Ylang? Did you know that? Yes, you knew that. <laughs> okay, good. No, okay. So the the Y is, uh, is pronounced as an E. And uh, Ylang Ylang has some fantastic uh, qualities, but I did want to point out that there is a beautiful graphic on the Young Living blog, which I've got the link there to. It's um, youngliving.com forward slash blog. Very easy to find. There's tons of information on it. It's a really fantastic site. But there's specifically a graphic there on um, Ylang Ylang and uh, some of its uses. So it's, in, it's used in perfume, it's considered to be a heart note, and it's very frequently used in 
I suppose, aphrodisiac formulas or sensual formulas, perfumes and that kind of thing. So it's, um, it's very gorgeous. The third one, my third favourite oil for romance, sensuality and so on, is this one. I wonder if you can guess what it is. Anyone guess what it is? Yes. Benjamin, you're very good. <laughs> Sandalwood Sharon, yes. Yeah. Yep, yeah, Sandalwood. Some of you spell it right. <laughs> So this is beautiful, beautiful sandalwood. It's in fact from our sandalwood farm in Hawaii. And it's just, I, I, I mean, I don't know about you ladies, but I really like woody scents. There's something, and especially on men, I think they're just so sensual and such a lovely aroma for um, men, for a cologne or a, or a man's, scent there uh, i just kind of associate them with men and i've got a, a photo to um to show you that in a minute but the some of the qualities of sandalwood it awakens sensuality so there you are if you want your sensuality to become greater then uh, royal hawaiian sandalwood might be one of your um next purchases and then it also invokes calmness and deep relaxation and in relationships, especially close relationships, calmness and peace and relaxation is very important uh, when, so, you know, so you feel comfortable and the person that you're with knows that you feel comfortable around them. So that's a, a very good one. And lots of, the, lots of the oils around sensuality are actually deeply calming. Sandalwood also promotes greater intuition and awareness. So once again, it's having that, that spiritual effect that helps us develop relationships and facilitates the qualities that we're trying to develop in ourselves that will lead to success in relationships, success in connections with others, even success in other areas of our lives. And sandalwood opens the heart. It's a, it's kind of a, a heavy or a, or a deep note. So it's a, um, it's a base note in, in your diffuser or in perfumes. So it's quite good to have as, as a standard ingredient and then you can add something more floral like a lavender or a rose or something like that. And the blend, the combination is amazing. Oh, here's my... <laughs> Here's my sexy men parade. And, um, and you know, I have my man in my life and he's my favourite man, but uh, there's, there's a few hotties out there in the world, isn't there, ladies? <laughs> a little bit of intermission for you. So who's your one? I mean, we've got the younger ones, we've got the older ones, we've got the in-between ones. Tell me what, what your favourite is. You, probably, you might have somebody else in mind as well. You can type them in too, but... But, and sorry, gentlemen, this is not really appropriate for you. This is a bit of a, um, uh, a girl exercise. So we have um, David Beckham. Oh, I almost forgot his name. David Beckham on the left. And then, oh, what's his name? Um, Hugh Jackman's yours. What, it's, to somebody tell me the second guy's name. I've forgotten it. Zach, thank you. Zach Efron. And then we've got Chris Hem Hemsey. <laughs> Hemsworth, Donny, Donny, Johnny Depp, and and who's the last one? George. Yes, of course. Okay, so our next oil, number four, is this one, and I wondered if you recognised it. Any ideas what that flower is, which plant that flower comes from? It's, isn't it gorgeous? It's absolutely divine. Thank you, Yvonne. You're correct. It is clary sage. And clary sage is considered to be a sensual oil, deeply relaxing, promotes feelings of well-being, and is a strong aphrodisiac. So powerful, powerful aphrodisiac so 
the sages are a um, they're not a perfumey sweet smell they've got a you know quite a pungent smell but in a blend and with the the right connect, connect combinations it can be amazing so it's another one to have on your order ship order list all right and i think now our very last one now yvonne you'll have to let somebody else answer this one if you know it <laughs> What's this one? This is also a divine oil and it's one of our most inexpensive ones too. So it's, um, it's a good one to have. It's just a beautiful, beautiful fragrance. Correct, Tanya, it's cedarwood, red cedarwood. And I don't know about you guys, but it's one of my favorites. It, it's so beautifully, it's such a beautiful aroma. Um, and it's also deeply relaxing. So. I mean, you don't want to be too relaxed when you're in intimate, uh, inter intimate circumstances. You don't want to fall asleep all the time, but uh, certainly it will uh, enhance that um, being present in your body because you're relaxed. You know, when we're kind of afraid, we're kind of in our head and we're not present. Um, and, you know, it's sexy when somebody's in their body. Sexy when somebody's moving sensually and you know you can tell people who are in their body men and women and when you have that when you it's easier to be confident in yourself when you're actually present in your body if you know what i mean and uh, confidence is very sexy confidence is probably the most sexiest thing apart from a red dress <laughs> And cedarwood is grounding, so often used, as you can see, another graphic on the blog, it's often used in meditation and uh, ceremonies. So um, it's, yeah, a lovely one to get. So if you haven't got that one already, make sure you get one of those because they're absolutely gorgeous. All right, so we've gone through our key oils that kind of, you know, we keep coming back to those oils in the recipes. Uh, so, so there's many more. There's many many more um neroli and patchouli and lavender and so many have beautiful enhancing effects in the area of sensuality so you you know you've got plenty of choices you like cypress do you meredith but um these were my fight my picks all right so now we're going to talk about setting the scene because this is the planning that and the work that comes with getting the outcomes that we're after and we're going to start with dinner because you know a meal is very often part of our social engagements even if it's catching up with a girlfriend and having a deep and meaningful or it's with a partner uh, dinner is an important part of all of that so there's various ways that we can use oils to enhance our dinner time and obviously we can use them in the food that we're cooking so we can use the um for example you might put some citrus fresh in your guacamole <laughs> or you might put some um, you might make some chocolates and use the recipe that we've got for the easter promo at the moment with some ginger uh, some nutmeg and so on or peppermint chocolates are very nice uh, you might make a beautiful soup with some um, uh, what's the one I'm thinking of lemongrass for example or lime and so on so food is a very sensual thing and we can enhance that with flavors from the essential oils the culinary ones in particular so um, you know and, and and I I don't know about you guys but I, you know, when I have guests around, one of my favourite things to do is to have meals where you have to kind of assemble it all yourself. And, you know, I've cooked up the, the bits and pieces, but the assembling's done on the table. And it's a, it's a really fun, entertaining way of having a dinner party. So it might be, for example, tacos, which is not a very elegant meal, but if they're family and they don't mind getting messy, then um, tacos can be a fun, uh, 
can be a great option. But you've got that kind of um, your mints over here or your beans over here and your guacamole or and, and, and so on. So um, spinach soup with nutmeg and black pepper. Yes, there, there's one. Uh, and black pepper is a lovely oil to have in cooking, actually. It's a very popular one. And so other examples, what, what are your, some of, any ladies out there who are into a bit of entertaining, what are some of your examples of meals that you assemble? And um, I have experienced also once, uh, you, you know, feeding my partner uh, something, and that was a very sensual experience as well. So anyway, that's getting a little bit uh, personal, but so, um, yeah, San Choi Bao, yes. Yes, uh, bruschetta, if you're kind of making it yourself, Gina. Yep. Also, uh, we have often done Vietnamese rice paper rolls. And that's something that you can assemble at your own plate as well. Uh, we have also done uh, um, sushi rolls. So if you're into Japanese, then sushi rolls are quite easy to make at home and to yeah, the rice paper rolls, the sushi rolls, that kind of concept. So lots of things you can do, incorporate the oils, uh, making food um, a central part. And obviously, obviously the um, ambience that you're creating is another way that you can plan and facilitate the atmosphere. So oils can work with that as well. Obviously, you can have one of your diffusers diffusing somewhere with that lovely ambient light. Uh, and some of the oils that create conversation. Is anyone aware what oils are great for facilitating conversation and interaction with a dinner party, for example? I know one in particular that's excellent for dinner parties, but love to hear if you guys have any ideas as well. No? Orange, yes, Melina, that was the one I was going to mention too. Orange is known to be, um, it's just, yeah, it just lightens up that mood and really facilitates dynamic conversation. So it makes it very fun. Yeah, cool. All right, well, that's our dinner. So that's gone well. And uh, now we're going to have a look at setting the scene in the bathroom. So bath. Baths can be very intimate, much more intimate than the shower, of course, because we take time and we can luxuriate in the water. We can have beautiful rose petals all over our bath and so on. And we can share it. If the bath's big enough, we can share it with somebody. And uh, yes, so you can drop your oils directly into your bath that's one way of doing it and uh, i want that view actually yvonne <laughs> yes i want that bath with the view as well but uh, massaging using the massage oils in your bath is a lovely thing to do as well and it might make a little bit of your um, a mess of your bath but that's okay you can clean it up the next day and yeah in you can make bath uh, bath salts with the oils and just scoop them in and use bath salts that's very the, the magnesium sulfate or the epsom salts really add a nice quality to the water that's quite sensuous as well so and then you you know add some lavender or uh or, or your favorite oil uh <laughs> melena's in an epsom salts bath right now so i I hope you've got a few oils in there as well, Melena. So Benjamin just commenting, I read somewhere that it's best to drop the essential oil onto Epsom salt first rather than direct into the water. And I've heard that too. Uh, if you if you want to do it like that, I guess the uh, Epsom salts emulsify slightly the oil and help it distribute it further. Uh, because once you put it on the, just drop it into the water, it just floats on the top and it can kind of you know get wasted up the sides but um, um if you don't have any epsom salts then just go for it anyway <laughs> uh, beautiful candles there uh, you can have a diffuser in your bathroom as well then the other bath 
product that I'd recommend is the Evening Peace. It's also a lovely one. The Sensation one, the massage oil is great, but the as far as the bath gel goes, the Evening Peace one uh, is quite lovely as well. Okay, mix it with some cell massage or V6. Yep, yep, V6 is lovely. And milk, yeah, gosh, I haven't tried that, but if it worked for Cleopatra. <laughs> and then we have the Sensation Massage Oil, which is excellent for, with the pump there, just rubbing it on your hands, gonna kind of rub it onto somebody's shoulders and give them a lovely, lovely sensual massage. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more later. Now we move to the bedroom. And I've got a couple of hints and tips for a romantic bedroom. Now have, have a look at this, this bedroom. Isn't this absolutely gorgeous? A very modern uh, bedroom. Now you'll notice, one thing you'll notice about it is that there's no clutter. <laughs> so a romantic bathroom or bed, sorry, bedroom does not have, piles of books piled up beside the bed. The TV is probably hidden away somewhere, preferably. Um, bedrooms are meant to be for sleeping and an intimate connection. Um, I'm not someone who actually agrees with TVs and, and desks and various things in the bedroom, unless you've got a one bedroom, um, one room apartment, um, but that's my bias. And, and then, um, you know, things we can do to, to, to um, set the scene in the bedroom is obviously diffuse. And one of the things that I've come across that I thought was such a great idea is to start with your purification oil. Now, we typically use purification for um, getting rid of aromas that we're not, we don't find pleasant, but it's also good for clearing the energy. So if you want to um, create an energetic space that's pure, purified, then diffusing your, pur your purification blend, maybe the day before or the morning before, um, you know, a, a date night or something like that, then that's a really great thing to do. And then on the night itself or during the day leading up to a, a big night, then you can use your more romantic oils and the, the ones that we've mentioned that maybe a rose, sandalwood, um, curry sage blend, something like that. Yeah. Ylang Ylang in, and orange is a, is a nice blend as well. It's quite um, uplifting. I would probably add some sandalwood to that myself, Milena, but whatever appeals. And then, you know, you, Massage is a really nice thing to do at the end of the day. It doesn't have to be a date night, just a regular end of the day. Um, just a little bit of a, a back rub. Uh, some people will use the, um, the massager, the vitassage, which is really quite easy. You put your oils into the little bottles. I haven't got an image of that, sorry. You'll, you'll need to go online for that. But it just gently vibrates and it's got these three oils coming out and you can put some lovely um, scents into it, even wintergreen and the pan away and those kinds of oils are really nice uh, just for, a, you know, a, a two minute massage at the end of the day. You know, he does it for you and you do it for him or whatever, whatever that is for you. So that can be a lovely um, intimate touch at the end of the day before you go to sleep. Another thing is to, um, to, to wear some perfume yourself to create your own scent. And we're going to look at that in a bit more detail in a minute. All right, so let's talk about loving touch. Now, having just taught raindrop training last weekend, and I've put it in here because if you're not really somebody who knows massage, you haven't learned massage, or you're not quite sure how to do it, and you know, you'd really like to get a little bit more proficient at it, then I highly recommend that you come along to our one-day training on raindrop technique. 
and learn this beautiful technique that you can practice on your family and friends and um, offer them something that's that's really delightful and in this one day training you get to receive one you get to give one you get to learn how to do it and it's a really fun day and they're always because the the beautiful art of touch is involved they're always very connecting days they're just it's just a lovely thing to be involved in uh, one of the raindrop trainings so that's on the website under uh, events if you, if you go to a company then it's down to events you'll find the raindrop dates there for the various cities so do consider that but you know just sitting with your partner at the end of the day maybe the tv's off and you're just connecting together chatting and offering each other a foot massage one of you can be mass you know you could be massaging each other and you know a little bit of oil can just enhance this process and encourage maybe um, intimate conversation maybe you have some issues you'd like to talk about you don't want to get upset about them you want to stay calm so you pick some calming oils and um, really connect that way because it's really important uh, in relationships to have those intimate conversations sometimes that address maybe some of the issues that don't get addressed in everyday busyness and it's amazing how intimacy can be fostered when some of those things get out of the way. Some of, the, some of those issues are dealt with. Now, it is a skill. It is, uh, there is an art to having potentially sensitive conversations. So I do encourage you to perhaps learn a, learn a couple of hints and tips from that. But certainly adding the oils in, having them diffuse or having them in 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 the massage oil that you're using on the feet is a really great idea. So here's a recipe for you. And it's an affectionate touch recipe. So if you are um, you know not you wanting to use a massage oil or you want to create your own blend then here's a beautiful recipe oh, I think it's sensational and you could put that in a little bit of v6 oil or even a little bit of olive oil or jojoba oil or something but um, the, the, the v6 oil has a beautiful uh, consistency already and it works very well with um, with for massage so yeah, a lovely, lovely recipe. I'm just giving you a moment to write that one down. It does require your rose. So if you don't have rose, and you, you haven't managed to get that one yet, then any fragrant floral, like, like a lavender or, or a or ylang ylang or um, jasmine even, one of those kinds of ones would be lovely. Now, what a lot of people will do is they'll find, they'll keep their bottles when they finish their five meal bottles of oils, they'll keep them and, uh, and use those for putting their own recipes in, their own blends. So it's mixed with, uh, so Karen, you mix it with some, well, you, you don't have to actually mix it with anything, but you can mix it with some V6 oil. And, and just you know, just a small amount, um, likable. So yeah, so Ellen, you find the rose a little bit overpowering? Then yeah, I would definitely use less in the recipe. So let me just yeah. So this this is the recipe for. Obviously, there's close to fifty drops of oil there. And then that's what you add to the amount of massaging that your um, massage oil that you're going to use. So say you put a, you know, maybe 20 cent, cover a 20 cent piece size 
with massage oil, with V6 oil, for example. And then you'll put your blend that you've made up, your recipe, and you'll put a couple of drops of that into your massage oil and then use that on, uh, on the back or on the feet. Does that make sense? Have I... Is that clear? Yeah, cool. All right, so speaking of massage oils, I just wanted to show you the V6. There's the V6 on your screen. It's a blend of six vegetable oils. It's a lovely, lovely consistency. It's the oil that we use if somebody's having a little bit of um, discomfort with one of the hot oils, for example, or you get a bit of peppermint a bit too close to your eyes or something like that, then the um, V6 oil is your diluter. But we use it in lots of situations where we want to, to make the oils less intense or, in this instance, being able to apply it in that massage uh, application. All right, so yeah, we've come to the lovely, wonderful topic of personal fragrancing. And this is, this is you know, we've kind of been touching on this with perfumes and so on uh, as well. So, so Meredith, you've lost sound. Can anyone else hear me? Yeah, okay, must be you. Yeah, must be, must be you, Meredith. Okay, so I wanted to mention here personal hygiene because in, in the, let's face it, um, we don't really want to talk about it, but personal hygiene is very important when it comes to close intimate relationships. And so this is why I, the first thing I've got here for you is a, mouth, a mouthwash recipe. Now, um, this is quite a, a long recipe here, so you'll need to write quickly, but I, I think this is a, a beautiful recipe with some salt for, for its minerals with some mega cow for its minerals, and then our, our combination of spearmint, cinnamon, peppermint, clove, and myrrh. So sensational formulation for freshness as well as cleanliness in the mouth. And um, so you, you do what you do with that is you add all the ingredients to a glass bottle. We, we prefer to keep oils, essential oils, in glass bottles. Maybe an old, um, uh, maybe an old apple cider vinegar bottle from your, from your pantry or something like that. And then you add all these ingredients because you'll need, um, you know, a reasonable size glass. And then you shake it, shake it up, mix it all up, and you've got your own um, mouthwash and that's obviously something that you would use twice a day morning and night now I just got a quote here that this is a little bit off topic but I think I thought it was important and it fundamentally it's a quote from a, an Australian dental journal and it's talking about alcohol containing mouthwashes so the mouthwashes that you buy in uh, in the supermarkets are alcohol based and there's been research to prove that they uh, that they contribute to oral cancer so it says here in the opinion of the authors that in light of the evidence currently available of the association of alcohol containing mouthwashes with the development of oral cancer it would be inadvisable for oral health care professionals to recommend the long-term use of alcohol containing mouthwashes. So hence we've got the recipe here and on the next page we'll have our own mouthwash as well, our thieves mouthwash. So just to answer your question, Karen, if you don't have the mega cow, just leave it out. It's only a teaspoon. So here we have the thieves mouthwash. Uh, it's very orangey, it's very lovely. You do need to shake it before you take it so that the oils mix up a little bit better. But um, the whole Thieves Dental range is excellent for oral health. And I highly recommend that you getting on, get onto them as soon as possible. I've covered that in more detail in my Thieves webinar that I did a couple of months ago. So if you want to find that more out, out more about that. Okay, another recipe for you is just a scented hair recipe. It's really easy. You just put a, a drop of rosemary, lavender, sandalwood, or another favorite oil onto your brush. 
and then brush your hair. So how lovely is that? So that can be very sensual as well. And then here we have a beautiful perfume recipe. And I haven't tried this, but I imagine that you could potentially use the Live Your Passion blend in place of the Neroli uh, in this blend as well. So you can play around with it, have an, have an experiment. But here we have our base woody grounding oil, the sandalwood oil, nine drops of that, and then our fragrant, light, uplifting floral, so rose or jasmine or neroli with some base oil. Yeah, present time has uh, neroli in it as well. Awesome. So you just put all those together and store in a dark glass, which is why the, um, the empty bottles can be really great. Almost to the end of our little session together. So I just wanted to summarise by, I guess, highlighting that the, um, I mean, we know that romance is an important part of life, but we often let it go. It's, it's, it's a bit like exercise and healthy eating sometimes. It kind of gets, um, you know, put off. You know, oh, the kids, I'm too busy, I'm too tired you know, whatever, but we're really talking about a, an ongoing commitment here to not just romance, but connection and sensuality and, and everything that that involves, being connected with our bodies, communicating better, making contact with the friends and families and loved ones in our life so that we feel connected and we feel more sensual. And then particularly bringing that into our intimate uh, relationship with our partner. And as you can, as I've kind of touched all the way through, it's not something that happens by accident. It's something that you have to make happen. And if you, you know, if you feel like the planning takes all the romance out of it, then get over it and just do it because you'll find that it does really work. All right, so... We come back to our love, our intimacy, romance, sensuality, and so on, and inviting these things into our lives, including cuddling and snuggling and pillow talk. These are uh, all can be facilitated and enhanced by our beautiful essential oils. So that's, that's it for today. Yes, thank you very much for your attention. I have recorded it. All our trainings are recorded and are in the virtual office um, within a couple of days. Sometimes I get it there the next day. Sometimes it depends. So let me just see your questions. Yes, the product guide is in the virtual office. Uh, there's a product guide and price lists in one section on their own. Um, i love to see you again next month on the 2nd of May. Uh, if you're interested or if you're one of the people growing a young living business, then I will see you on the 18th of April, a couple of weeks for our business. And um, I'm just going to stop recording now so I can answer your questions.